and was doing a pretty good job, but you know, helping them, keeping them together until I get a good pastor. And he said, Brother Lance, there is a young lady who just tried to commit suicide. She's in the hospital here in Canton. Would you go pray for her? Well, I'd never prayed for anybody that was trying to commit suicide before. And so driving, he told me the room number, gave me the directions how to get there. But driving there, I said, God, look, I don't even know what to say to her. Number one, I'm just going to believe you. The Holy Ghost is going to just talk to her through me. Remember what Jesus said, and they del deliver you up before, before the counselors and all that. Don't even premeditate what you're going to say. The Holy Ghost will speak it for you. I'm paraphrasing, but that's what he said. So I prayed all the way there, Brother Tim. I said, okay, God, it's in your hands because I, I don't know what, I don't, I don't know one word to say to that girl. You know, it's a young girl, 20, 21, whatever. When I walked into that room and began, opened my mouth, the Holy Ghost ministered to her. I don't remember a word said. And it wasn't a prophecy like, it was just the Holy Ghost just, just talking, speaking. That girl laid there and repented. She had rings on both hands, almost on every finger. I just think about any rings. She laid there crying, and what's she doing? She's taking the ring. Oh, whoa. Huh. Praise God. And God had ministered to her. Amen. So I'll tell you what. When God's in it, it works. Amen. We can jump in on our own and cause shipwreck. But when God does it, he does it right. Amen. And that young lady actually just cried and bawled and laid there and repented. Amen on that bed. But I'm glad, I'm glad, you know, that God has the answer. Amen. All that mourn in this generation, all that mourn. Amen. Those that are on drugs, tobacco, alcohol, whatever. Amen. We have the answer. Now let's bring it this way. Listen to this. He goes on in verse 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. We have churches, one, one God church is filled with people with depression. I run into it a lot. But we have the answer. You know, then the morning Zion, depression, fear, anxiety, troubles. Well, we all have troubles to a degree, you know. But God's got the answer to, no matter what it is. And the anointing is what makes the difference. Amen. Amen. If the anointing had been on me in that hospital room, I, I wouldn't know what said to that girl. I mean, she had slashed both wrists. They had her all tied up, bandaged up, you know, tried to commit suicide. I remember Sister Nona Freeman, you might have heard some of her, her uh, testimonies and tapes or CDs, whatever. Her and her husband was in Africa. They spent their, their life in Africa. They went over as young, a young married couple years ago. And you talk about the testimonies of the miracles of God. But she's washing dishes. She's a very spiritual fact. She just passed away a few, what, three or four months ago. It's been real recent. And she was like, I think in her 90s. But anyway, she's washing dishes and the Lord spoke to her. It's going to be a car coming down that road in a few minutes. And I want you to go out on the front porch and uh, wait on it. When it gets close enough, you can see the driver just smile and wave. That's all God told her. <laughs> Sister Mar, she dried her hands, walked out on the porch. Sure enough, of course, I say the road, it wasn't like our roads. It's just a dirt road. You see the dust flying, you know. So when the car gets close enough, she just smiles and waves. And of course, he's looking at her. She's waving at him, even waving at him through the back window. He keeps going. I don't know how much time passed, a week or two, a few days. I don't remember that. But I remember the testimony very well. And a, a, a fellow approached her. He said, you don't know me, do you? She said, no, sir, I don't believe so. I said, I know you don't, but I was the man that drove by your house the other day. I had come to the end of my rope. I was on my way to commit suicide. But when I drove by that house, as far away as you could see me, you were smiling and laughing. You know, waving, smiling. And I thought, there is somebody that loves me. There's somebody that cares about me. And needless to say, he didn't commit suicide. Well, that's why God told her to go do that. Amen. You know, when the Lord says do it, we need to do it. Amen. Sometimes it don't sound, it, it sounds a little strange to us, but if it's God, believe me, there's a reason for what he's saying. Amen. 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 To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the all of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called 
trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Wow. Well, let's give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Yes, sir. We have the answer, church. We've got the message for the world. We've got the message for those that are bound, those that are in prison. I'm not talking about both naturally and spiritually. Praise God. Amen. Second Chronicles 26, 5. I've told people through the years, I said, okay, if you're having a little tough time here, or even a big tough time or whatever, you're having a tough time. If things are not going, I'll tell, tell you what you do. Do what Second Chronicles 26, 5 said. Speaking of the king, King Uzzah of uh, Judah. And here's what it said. Who sought God in the days of Zechariah. Who had an understanding in the visions of God. And here's the point. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Wow. Think about that. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Amen. Seeking the Lord, and I'm not going to the little scripture, but seeking the Lord is, is I mean, that's how we can move God. That's what God said. Remember Hebrews 11, 6? Rewarder to who? Them that diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. Amen. You know, uh, I've been through it all, I guess, preaching around through the uh, full time, like I said, 39 years in June. June 12th, first night of revival full time, 1971. But I guess, you know, traveling, you see about everything. And uh, I've seen them supposed to be shouting, praising God, worshiping God, and they got in trouble. It was in the flesh, not the spirit, as far as what they were doing. But I remember Brother Elder Wade telling me years ago, he was in a church that had a balcony back years ago, and that was years when they played the accordions, didn't have all the modern technology they have in this hour, you know, in these churches. Played the old accordions. Well, his sister's on the balcony, and she's playing the accordion, got her eyes shut, she's worshiping God while she's playing, she gets in the spirit, and steps off the balcony. Oh. She flipped in the air and her dress didn't even come up. It stayed perfect. When God's in something, he don't make mistakes. And folks, she playing that accord in the air. Do you know she stepped off the balcony, landed on her feet, still playing the accordion, still thought she's on the balcony. God have mercy. Now that's the anointing. <laughs> Hallelujah. You better believe one thing. That is the anointing. Praise God. If it wasn't, forget it. Hallelujah. John 15, 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. Amen. Amen. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Here's the point. For without me, ye can do nothing. Wow. We're going to try to blunder around on our own? No. Because of the anointing, progress is made in the church of living God. Because of the anointing, people hit the altar. I've heard back through the years when the saints of God stood up and testified under the anointing. And sinner people get up while they testify and run and bawl and squall on the altars. There's such an anointing on their testimony. Like I said, we shouldn't try to do anything for God without the anointing. I don't care what it is. It's teaching kindergarten. We ought to do it under the anointing. It was saying it's special. We ought to do it under the anointing. What is our purpose? What are we here for? Put on a show? No. No, we're here to get God to move for us. Yes. Amen. We're here to worship Him, praise Him, hear more of the Word of God, and begin to glorify Him wow. in our spirits. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That He may be glorified. That's what the last part of verse 3 said, wasn't it? He said, let me read the last part of that. That they might be, be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. That which my heavenly father's planted won't be rooted up. Right? Amen. Okay. The planting of the Lord that he, God, might be glorified. We're not in this to glorify ourselves. We're in this to glorify him. Amen. It's not about us. It's about him. It's not how, how big and uh, great things we can do. It's all about Him. Amen. Amen. We keep that in mind, we're going to be all right. Yes. But I've seen so many didn't keep that in mind. God began to use them, began to anoint them, and work some of the gifts. Isn't it? They got exalted and consequently went down. We cannot glorify ourselves and come out a winner with God. We're going to pay for it. Right. We must know that right now. 